Before the first driving happens, set some behaviour rules. The supervisor promises to not shout. The learner promises to listen and not be distracted. The training sessions will start short and increase in length as experience is gained. Try to keep things light-hearted and not show too much concern. If you are following the advice given to this point, there really is very little to worry about for the first driving sessions. The danger will come later after a few hours of training when traffic starts to be encountered. Now you need to realise that if the learner has never driven before and never sat in the driver's seat, they don't even know what each pedal does. We have young people get into our driving simulators and if we ask them to accelerate they have to ask us what pedal does that, what pedal slows down and why are there three pedals. I'm sure the learner realises that the steering wheel when moved left takes the vehicle left and when moved right takes the vehicle right, but they've never operated a steering wheel before and they have no idea how heavy it is, how much to turn and how far they can turn. These are things that you and I take for granted that the novice driver doesn't realise. So as the instructor we are trying to simplify things here and introduce things progressively. For you, the supervisor, let's pause here and discuss teaching someone to ride a bicycle as many important similarities exist between learning to ride a bicycle and learning to drive a car. The person learning to ride a bicycle for the first time doesn't know how to make the bicycle go forward, stop and steer. They also don't realise the balance needed is much harder than it looks. Lots of nervous moments and at least a few fallovers and tears often await a child learning to ride for the first time. It takes weeks of practice to get proficient on a bicycle, so we shouldn't try and expect too much too soon when it comes to driving. The supervisor, often a parent, typically holds the bike and trots beside the first time rider, helping with balance and offering reassurance. The same applies when driving. From the passenger seat, the supervisor is riding beside the nervous first time driver and as a last resort can help with steering, can take the vehicle to neutral and can apply the park brake if things go wrong. Therefore, you need to reassure the novice you're there with them to help and not to shout. The first time rider doesn't know how much braking stops or slows the bicycle. Many novice drivers fear a vehicle will flip over or lift in the air if the brakes are applied too hard. The first time rider doesn't know how much steering turns the bicycle or results in a crash. Likewise, the first time driver doesn't know how reactive the steering wheel is. The first time rider doesn't know how much turning of the pedals results in how much movement. Likewise, the first time driver doesn't know how reactive the accelerator pedal is. When riding, we adjust the seat to get the rider to sit correctly and space their hands equally on the handlebars for balance. Likewise, we want the novice driver to sit the correct distance from the steering wheel and hold the steering wheel at 3 and 9 and balance themselves. Imagine the future disaster you would create by teaching someone to ride with a seating position that is fundamentally wrong or encouraging them to ride on a busy road or very fast before they are ready. You only get one chance to start and form safe and correct habits. So forgive all of this initial explanation, but you don't want to create a bad driver with bad habits. You want the brain to imprint the correct techniques from the very beginning. So to you the supervisor. Although the person you taught to ride was probably a lot younger, the person you were teaching to drive might be older, but they're just as inexperienced and need your mentoring to get over their nervousness and to slowly learn something that you've been doing automatically for decades. Due to age differences, the new driver is probably different dimensions to the typical driver of the vehicle being used. So you need to get them set up in the seat, just like on a bicycle, so they can comfortably operate the controls. I will use this simulator frame to demonstrate. The young drivers should reach forward with their arms outstretched and lay their arms over the top of the steering wheel. The seat should then be adjusted so their wrists pivot on top of the steering wheel. Remember, many cars have telescopic steering wheels, which go both up and down and in and out. Hands should be placed at 3 and 9 on the steering wheel for optimum control and this bend should form in their arms. Such a bend is less fatiguing and gives them plenty of rotation to steer left or right in equal amounts. With arms too straight it is tiring and limits their rotation of the wheel. Hands position at 3 and 9 sets them up to use the indicator and wiper stalks, is ergonomically how the vehicle is designed and is airbag safe. All elite drivers use two hands in this position. Any other hand position comes from complacency and bad habits. 
They should then fully depress the pedals and check there is a slight bend in the knee. If the knee locks into a straight position, they cannot gently unsqueeze any pedal and will be jerky with the foot controls. If the knee locks, the seat needs to be moved in to prevent this from happening. Then the position of the backrest needs to be in contact with the back. This provides comfort, control and communication of what the vehicle is doing on the road. The headrest then needs to be in line with the driver's head. For the beginning phase, I recommend the seat be raised so the young driver can see over the bonnet. This will make them more relaxed being able to see the vehicle's corners. Ultimately, drivers should sit as low as possible in the cabin while still being able to see over the dashboard. But if you commence with the seat too low, the learner will be squirming in the seat and concerned about not being able to see the corners of the vehicle. It's better to sacrifice some quality for reduced stress in the initial phases. Remember, we are trying to get over the nerves and get the learner started. Apart from the slightly raised seat height, you really want to get the new driver into the habit of using the correct upright seating position with relaxed elbows and hands at 3 and 9 on the wheel. These are habits you want the brain to form and lock in for life. If you let the seat be reclined or one hand on the wheel or any other loose technique happen, it will be programmed as a habit and very hard to change. Later on, P-platers will recline the seat and steer badly, thinking their way is cool, but the skilled drivers around them will be laughing at their ineptitude. Once the seating position is set up, the mirrors then need to be set. Again, the learner will have no idea how to use the mirror controller and where to position the mirrors. Ideally, the side mirror should be set so the learner just cannot see the side of the vehicle in their normal seating position. But again for nerves, and to help them get started, the mirrors can be turned in slightly as many new drivers want to see the side of the vehicle for reference. Over time, these can be adjusted out to reduce blind spots. When I taught my eldest daughter to drive, it was months into the process when she floored me with the comment that she did not know the mirror controller clicked to the left side to adjust that mirror. I had shown her how to operate the driver's side mirror and assumed she realised the controller worked the same way for the passenger's mirror. Assumptions are the mothers of ignorance. The supervisor can use the sun visor vanity mirror to help keep an eye on traffic approaching from behind. Or a car parts store will sell a small clip-on mirror that you can use to watch for traffic behind and parents use to watch infants in the back seat. In future lessons, when travelling on suburban and rural roads, the supervisor should use these mirrors and the side mirror to keep an eye on following traffic. So to this point, we've introduced a lot of preliminary information. I congratulate you for your patience to watch this far. The objectives are to reduce stress, ensure the first sessions go smoothly, and that good habits are being formed from the very start. The next video will commence our driver training. Our driver training support doesn't stop there. If you go to our YouTube channel at SDT Australia, you'll find videos on the various courses we offer, plus over 40 free to access videos on safe driving. These include videos on the correct use of roundabouts, traffic light tips, braking distance comparisons, crash testing that we have performed, tyre safety, carjacking prevention, and the list goes on and on and on. So please feel free to access these videos and I hope they support the training you are planning to deliver. In all segments of this video, when a learner is driving, the filming is done by a backseat passenger or a fixed camera. In all segments where filming is done from the front seat, the vehicle is parked or the driver is not a learner. When a learner is driving on the road, the front seat adult supervisor cannot be distracted or impaired. This supervisor cannot be using a mobile phone for any reason.